finally, after eight hours spent climbing this mountain, I've made it. I wonder what's up here. <laughs> Hi, my name is Mars, and I regret going on a massive full day hike up a mountain. Oh, and this video is sponsored by a curiosity stream. More on that later. Let me cook up the scene for you. This took place with my friend group, the Bananas and Coconuts. I've talked about them before. They're my friends who are yellow and brown on the outside, but white on the inside. See? White. Now, after a tough year of med school, we decided the best way to celebrate our slowly deteriorating mental state would be to go on a road trip from the very top of New Zealand all the way to the bottom. Why, you ask? Because New Zealand is just beautiful. You could drive around and every 10 minutes you would find an absolutely picturesque spot to hang around. Natural hot springs? Yes. Beautiful forests? <laughs> yes, sir. Sheep? Yes. Yes, there are sheep. <laughs> there are too many. Please help! They're overrunning the country! <laughs> During this trip, we spontaneously decided to take this casual eight-hour hike called the Tongariro Alpine Crossing. And by we, I mean Jafina. J just Jafina. She was the athletic explorer of the group, having conquered many a trek and even had her own custom gear, like a tube that connected the water bottle inside her bag into her mouth so that she can sip. Jafina was very much used to hiking, whereas I was not. Because early on this trip, we climbed up a small mountain that was super short, took only 30 minutes, barely an inconvenience. But that still had me like... <coughs> And yet, somehow after that, when Jeffina brought up the idea for the eight-hour treacherous mountain hike later on the trip, I was like, <coughs> <coughs> Yeah, sounds great. And as we were preparing for this new pit stop in our New Zealand adventure, there was a distinct moment that I knew it was all over for me. And that was at the very start. <coughs> Be warned. But thankfully, within the group, we had people like Kay, the responsible elder brother character who actually wanted us to, you know, not die. What are you, a doctor? <laughs> <coughs> This guy, Kay, was so responsible, he was like stocking up on high calorie foods for our hike and generally kept a lookout for us to make sure that we survived the trip. Wow, what a nice guy. However, he was also obsessed with the Arakanji jellyfish for a year. So I don't know, you win some, you lose some. You gotta love the contrast of such forward thinking, future doctor behavior with me, who had prepared for the full day mountain climb dressed up in my pajamas, pants taped to my shoes, and a towel wrapped around my shoulder. I'm ready, nothing can stop us now. A at least I have a towel. <laughs> Why am I doing this eight hour hike again? And yeah, I was a little nervous. I had never gone on a huge trek like this and I was clearly unprepared for this. But you know what they say, when you hit rock bottom, the only way to go is up. Well, whoever made that can shove it because I don't think this is what they meant. So as if the pouring rain wasn't bad enough before we started on our climb, it also made the pathway super slippery. So we had to go slower to make sure we didn't fall off the mountain immediately. And the actual steps were so high, like I legit had to bring the entirety of my leg up and over for just one step. So my quads were getting the workout they had never even dreamed of having. And I was just like, <coughs> <coughs> and it kept getting steeper. So in order to make it past the giant steps with my rapidly declining stamina, I had to press down on my thigh with my full upper body strength. Multiply this behavior for the entire climb and what does that equal? Arthritis. Because by forcing my weight down on my legs, even if it was to go up, I was essentially grinding my knees down and permanently damaging it in the process. Oh no, I need those. <laughs> Get it? Wait, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry! <laughs> but that was nothing compared to what my friend Drac had to go through. Because this guy is one of my true homies, a brother in arms and a massive simp. A day before the trip, I had ripped a giant hole in my pants and was flaunting some cake to the world. I already made a video on this, so go watch that. So what does Drac, my boy, do for support? 
he rips his pants during the hike. Not on purpose, of course. But aside from that, he also legitimately saved my life during the climb. As we got further up the slippery mountain, the pathway was coated in ice and got more narrow by the second, with a rope guide being bolted on for us to hold on to. But unfortunately, as I was rounding the corner, my lack of knees came back to haunt me, as I didn't raise my leg high enough to clear a rock, and I tripped towards the edge. And as I slowly stumbled, I realized that this is it. It's all over. My life is flashing before my eyes. And why did I choose to swim in mayonnaise? Then suddenly I felt a tug as Drac desperately clutched onto my bag and pulled me back with adrenaline-filled force, snapping me back to reality. <sighs> okay. Drac? Why are you grabbing my cheeks? But the climb kept going. The path kept leading up and up and up, and honestly, the non-stop trekking with the rain beating down on us was pretty demoralizing. Why am I doing this eight-hour hike again? <laughs> However, with that being said, three quarters up the mountain, the land suddenly leveled out, and instead of the narrow pathway that we were used to, we encountered a giant expanse of land with heavy fog surrounding us. And I'll give credit where it's due. This was legitimately one of the coolest parts to this entire trek. Like, we'd been transported to another mystical world or apocalyptic wasteland. The bananas and coconuts were huddled in the middle of the mist, with a barely visible signpost leading our way. It honestly did feel like there was going to be a demon soul boss around the corner. Dad? <laughs> hey yo guys, turn back, we went the wrong way. However, that didn't mean it was any easier to keep going with the hike, since we still hadn't reached the peak. And as soon as the plateau was over, it was back to climbing straight up. And it was at this point that Jafina mentioned that she was worried about me, because I was absolutely croaking, like... <laughs> And it wasn't just me either. I think the air thinning out as we got higher and higher, along with the steep pathway, was starting to affect Tato as well. The lovable diva of the group and the potato queen. Well, actually, with her croaking just like me, I guess she's more like mashed potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> But in reality, she is a huge sundere, somebody who actually deeply cares about her friends. So she eventually gave Drac some duct tape to help fix his pants, which only really lasted for like 10 minutes. Yes! I mean, oh, oh no, gosh, I hate that. But you know what's worse than going up the mountain? Somehow going down. Because hey, remember when I say it was an eight hour hike? Well, apparently the actual mountain portion takes three hours and the remaining five hours is the entire slow descent down. Why did I do this eight hour hike? <gasps> Apparently, this was strategically done so that you climb the mountain when you have the most stamina and do the remainder of the downhill climb when you're like fizzling out. Which does make sense, but it still didn't help us. The slow, shallow descent downwards was using our leg muscles the entire way and it was just pure agony. By this point, I didn't even have enough knee for this, so I was just like jello wobbling down the pathway like in Harry Potter. Now we're five hours into our trip and the bananas and coconuts had gone from snacking and chatting away throughout the trip to completely radio silent, trying to conserve as much energy as we possibly could. And we were just focused on completing this hike as quickly as possible. And the one who had just about had enough was Sai. He was the sarcastic memester of the group, you know, the party animal, the mad lad. And he was absolutely done with this hike. He was speeding along, walking at such a consistent rate and chugging along, almost like... Almost like... <laughs> Wait, Sai! Sai, no, don't do it! Sai was so checked out that he straight up warned all of us to stay out of his way. He had built some speed and momentum and he didn't care if we were in front of him. Nothing was going to derail him. And whilst it may have been a bit excessive, it was also very relatable because I was also just walking on autopilot at this point. This silent push forward kept going until the very end of the hike where a van was thankfully waiting for us. Was this, was this the end? We made sure to stretch our muscles so we didn't straight up die the next day, got into this life-saving van, and traveled back in silence. Finally, it was over. All right, take us home, driver man. <laughs> So after detailing all of our grueling struggles, the obstacles, the difficulties we experienced, you may be asking, just like I did, Mars, 
Why did you go on an eight-hour hike? Mm, well, there is one thing I didn't mention. Before we reached the top of the mountain, the rain had mysteriously stopped, and the clouds had parted for but a single moment, beckoning us to keep going. And when we finally reached the summit, we peeked over the edge, only to see this absolutely breathtaking sight in front of us. The mountain ranges, the sheer height, the emerald lake below us, it was all so picturesque. I, I can't even describe it with words. But that's when I realized that I didn't care about why I climbed up this mountain, didn't really care about my knees either. What I really treasured was my experience that I had with my close friends. It was never the goal to get from destination A to B, because what made this hike worthwhile for me was the journey that the bananas and coconuts had endured together. So whilst I may not have enjoyed the hike itself, the friendship, banter, adversity, just the small moments, all of it culminated in some of my fondest memories yet. One that I still look back on with such intense nostalgia. And I couldn't imagine doing this trip with anybody else. And I know I haven't been the best at reaching out, but if you are watching this, please know that I miss you guys a lot. And I genuinely hope that you're all doing well. And whilst I'm feeling nostalgic about my friends, I want to take a moment to thank the sponsor who helped bring this video to life. Nebula is a platform where a whole bunch of top of the line creators like myself and a few other animators to create 100% ad free quality content without the added stress of the YouTube algorithm or demonetization. I'm a broken record at this point, but I really want you guys to see this documentary about the Nebula original digital gold miners. All about gold farmers using a runescape to grow their wealth. Nebula has always been amazing about allowing me to break out of my content, and they honestly allowed me to make Mafia 1 and 2 and future projects to come to life. They've been super awesome, but so has Curiosity Stream, which is what Nebula is being bundled with. Curiosity Stream is a platform with thousands of shows all about history, philosophy, medicine, basically things that I enjoy. Why not watch Rock the Park, which has six seasons and it's all about people traveling to America's greatest treasures, the national parks. All of it to highlight the beauty and the wildlife of it all. They climb plenty of mountains and I'm definitely not jealous of them. And I really do recommend you to get the bundle by signing up with the link below, which will let you get access to Curiosity Stream and Nebula. This entire deal costs less than $15 per year, and it is 26% off. And as long as you're a Curiosity Stream member, you will always have access to Nebula. So once again, click on the link in the description below or go to curiositystream.com slash Mars to get both Curiosity Stream and Nebula for less than $15 a year. All right. And with that, Ladies, everybody, be good to your friends and stay amazing. <laughs>